Hello everyone and welcome back to Rich History. In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things to collect, World War II field jackets. The first jacket we'll be discussing is the Parsons jacket, which later came to be known as the M41. The M41 was designed by Major General James K. Parsons, who based much of it off of civilian windbreaker designs. The jacket came down to about the waist, which made it a little bit more tight-fitting than some of its predecessors. The jacket's outside was made out of cotton poplin, and the jacket's inside was made out of wool flannel. The jacket had both a zipper front and a button front, which actually uh, soldiers did not like very much. They found it very annoying. The M41 had buttons on the waistband and on the cuffs for heat retention. M41s have shoulder epaulets, although early models did not have this feature. Another difference is that on the slit pockets, earlier models had button closures on the pockets, while later models like this one only have open slit pockets. The M41 was the most widely used jacket during World War II, seeing action in all theaters of operation by all branches. The jacket even saw use after the M43 was adopted, just because of supply issues, and some commanders thought the M41 looked nicer than the M43. As I kind of alluded to earlier, the M41 wasn't the most popular jacket. Um, it was too hot in the summertime and too cold in the wintertime. Plus when it got wet, it would stay wet because of the cotton exterior. The other thing was that it compromised camouflage ability because light reflected off the outer shell really easily. So often what soldiers would do is they would flip it inside out because the wool reflected light a lot less than the outer shell. Uh, in addition, the pocket storage really sucked. Like look, let's say you have like a ration you want to store in your jacket. Like, you really gotta, like, cram it in there, and then, like, once you're, once it's in, like, you're out of space. Like, you can't fit anything else in the pocket, because it, like, comes down so low. So, you know, often what you'd see is soldiers, they would stuff stuff, like, down the actual jacket, because it would be held by the tight waistband. So that was a way to store more stuff. All these flaws led to the creation of the M43 jacket, which we'll get into a little later. Now, this particular jacket is actually kind of interesting because it was used by a pilot in the China-Burma-India theater. So you could tell because it has the uh, theater-made um, Army Air Force patch. So the, that would have been made in a tailor shop in, in probably India. Um, it has the lieutenant's bars on the epaulets. And it has these wings, which are really cool because they're made out of like an ivory material. So those are theater-made in the China-Burma-India theater. So very neat. One last thing about the M41, the zipper is usually made by a company called Talon, though on this one, it was made by a company called Conmar. And on this jacket, the pilot decided to attach a China Burma India Theater coin uh, via leather to the zipper, which is kind of neat. The next field jacket we'll be taking a look at is the M41 Arctic field jacket. Now, before we get into this, I have to preface this by saying this is not a typical example of an Arctic field jacket. This one was actually worn by a combat engineer uh, who landed on Normandy and then fought through the Battle of the Bulge. This was his during the Battle of the Bulge, and he actually field modified it to make it look kind of like the British uh, pattern uh, 37 battle dress uniform, but it still has uh, some of the key elements, so I'm going to show it to you guys because I think that it's important to uh, show the differences between the Arctic M41 and the normal M41. The main differences are that in the Arctic M41, the liner is a lot thicker um, and it's a darker color. So I'll put a comparison up right here to show you the difference between the Arctic and the normal M41. Um, also on a typical Arctic M41, the waist is going to come down a lot lower than the normal M41 and there'll be buckles on the waistband instead of buttons so that it can be drawn tighter to conserve more heat. So yeah, as I mentioned before, this jacket was worn by a veteran who served in the Battle of the Bulge and modified this jacket to look more like the Pattern 37 battle dress, which I'll put up on the screen so you can get a comparison. Uh, and there's a lot of like field repairs on both this and the set of matching trousers to the Arctic M41 jacket that I have um, in the collection also. These jackets would have been worn in places where the M41 was not suitable, so places like the Aleutian Islands in Alaska or, yep, in the Battle of the Bulge. Next up is one of my favorite jackets, the Winter Combat Jacket, more commonly known as the Tanker Jacket. The outer shell was a khaki color, and the inside was a thicker wool lining. The jacket had a wool knit collar, waistband, and cuffs. 
Uh, the waistband made it better for sitting, uh, hence why it was ideal for tankers. You might recognize the jacket from the movie Fury, uh, where Brad Pitt plays a tanker in the Second Armor Division. The jacket was initially only issued to tankers, though as the war went on and other service members realized how great of an all-around jacket it was and how superior it was to the M41, uh, they began to use them too, so you'll see photos of them in use by other units. This particular jacket was used by the 12th Army Group, and it has a set of service bars on the sleeve. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, the famous M43 jacket. The M43 basically solved all the problems that the M41 had. It was a darker green, so it was better for camouflage. Uh, this one's lighter just because it's been worn in the sun a lot, so it's been kind of bleached, but generally they were a darker color. The cargo pockets were also a lot bigger, and there's four of them, as you can see, so that's a lot of rations. So you can fit all sorts of good stuff in the pocket, and you'll have plenty of space for all the things that you need to put in there. The outside of the M43 is made out of cotton sateen, and the inside is made out of cotton poplin, which is what the M41 outer was made out of. Uh, the jacket also had a detachable hood that could be worn if desired by the soldier. Although the jacket was designed in 1943, it didn't see widespread distribution until late 1944, uh, and you can see it used commonly uh, during the Battle of the Bulge, and it also saw use in uh, Korea. Wrapping it up, our last jacket is the women's M43 jacket. The women's M43 is very similar to the M43, uh, and it only shares a couple of uh, minor differences. For example, the pockets are actually fake, and the waist is tighter, both to account for the uh, <laughs> uh, feminine physique. Also, um, there's no gas flap on the buttons, it's just straight holes. As compared to the other M43, uh, the gas flap was created to prevent like chemical gases from getting into the uh, in inside the jacket. This jacket would have been worn by members of the Women's Army Corps. This particular one was worn by a woman who served in the Philippines during the war. Well, everyone, that about wraps it up. If you want to see more of this informative type content, leave a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Have a good one.